When we read the book about Mariana Becomes a Butterfly, what were the steps that Mariana followed to use her to use to help make her hand pollinator? Does anybody ask. remember? Ask, David, you're right. Ask is first. <coughs> she asked lots of questions. What was her problem? What was wrong with her plants? Um, she did something and it uh, wasn't growing. Any it wasn't growing any berries. Yeah, not growing any berries. So she tried to think about what she could do to help herself, right? So her aunt gave her a notebook and gave her some ideas, right, to think about. And so then she had to imagine how she could create a hand pollinator to fit her plant, right? Well, after she did that, then what did she do, Jason? She, after she got some ideas, then she planned it, right? She drew a design. What did she do then, Nooch? She created it. She created it. She tried it, and she created it. She tried it out to see if it worked. Yes. And if it didn't quite work for that one, what would she have to do? Sophia? Improve. Improve it. That's right. Today I'm going to show you some different kinds of plants. And each is shaped a little different. Its structure is a little different. And its nectar is in a different spot. Plants that I'm going to show you today look like this. It's called a bucket orchid. Who can tell me what a bucket is? What's another word for a bucket? A synonym for a bucket? Um, a pail. A pail. That's right. Hmm. This one's called a bucket orchid. Let's take a good look at it. A peel. Yeah. Let's look at it. Yeah. Why do you think I might call it a bucket orchid? Anybody have an idea? Yeah. It, it might look like a bucket. Does it look like a bucket? Do you see a place where it looks like it might have a bucket section? Like in the eye, uh, like right, like, yeah. Like right in here. So guess where the nectar is? Uh, in there. In there, right. And so the insect has to sort of go down and through a tunnel in order for it to get its nectar. This one's a Dutchman's pipe. And look how it's, it's shaped. Well, this is the third one. This is called Jack in the Pulpit. <laughs> yeah, kind of like Jack in the Beanstalk, right? But this has got a separate part. It's got a spathe that looks, that's right over the top of the plant. And the spathe is kind of in the way for it to get reached down and get inside to get its nectar, which is down in here. Okay, and then the fourth one is the poppy. A poppy, yep. How many people have ever seen Wizard of Oz? You know when, when Dorothy falls asleep because the poppy makes her sleepy? Mm. Which of the plants do you think is going to be the easiest for an insect to get to, Selma? The poppy, that's right. So in order for us to test these uh, models, we're going to, you're going to be an engineer today, and these are the different kinds of plants that you are going to create a hand pollinator for. Okay? These are just pictures of them. I'm going to give you a model, which is not a real plant. It's just something that it's, that's going to be used instead of. This is the model of the bucket. This is a model of the bucket orchid. This is a model of the Dutchman's pipe. Where? Right here. It's a little test tube. This is the model of the Jack in the Pulpit. You see Dave? Yeah. It has a little stiff part right here. Jack in the Pulpit. And this is the Poppy. <laughs> you're all smiling. Guess you're not going to test this one. I'm going to test that one. So, okay, I didn't show you or give you real plants, did I? I'm not going to give you real plants. I'm going to give you models. Why do you think that might be important if you were an agricultural engineer, you were creating hand pollinators? Why would it be important for you to use models instead of real flowers at first? What do you think? Because you could Hurt the plants, exactly. You don't really want to use real plants and keep hurting them and breaking them, do you? 
So I'm going to give you a bag of materials today. I'm going to give you your old bag of materials back again. But there are some different things inside. You also have a straw. You also have a piece of wire. And you also have a piece of string. The other thing that should be in your bag is a popsicle stick. What part of the hand pollinator do you think you might use some of these things for? To stick to put in. So you could use it just to put the stick to put in, okay? What are the two parts that you're going to need to make your hand pollinator? Uh, the, the, the holder and the, uh, and, the, uh, per, and, and the thing that holds the pollen and puts it down. Right. So your hand pollinator is going to need two parts, a handle and the part that will collect and pick, off, pick up and collect and drop off pollen, right? Anybody have any idea how we can test to see if our hand pollinator will work? Um, you could like put some like the sugar or the baking stuff. So baking soda. Baking soda. You can put it and then you can test it. Like again. we did before. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you ex absolutely that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the three tap test to see if we can pick up and drop off. This is the page where you get to imagine. You get to imagine on your own. This is where you come up with your own ideas. I want a colorful doll. This time. What one? Payson, are you drawing a design? What do you think you're going to use to get into that bucket orchid? I know one. Maybe this. Why do you think? Why do you think that eraser will work? Does that pick up and, and drop off pretty good? Yeah. It does, but look at the shape of your look at the shape of your bucket orchid. The bush. How will that get inside? Bush. It going in. It won't get in, Ethan. So do you think that's a good idea or not a good idea? If we cut it, you have an idea. Oh. Okay, everyone should have some designs on their paper, some things that they imagined will work. The next part is to, you all imagine, now what's next? Plan. plan. How do you plan? Do you plan by yourself or with a partner? With a partner. partner. Now you have to explain your part you think is going to work and tell them why. And then draw that plan because that's the one thing that you're going to try I out. I use this. Yeah, that will work. Wait, what about the straw? The straw will work? And then what are you going to put on the end of the straw? Can you put something on the end of the straw? I can put the... Now how are you going to get it attached? So I have... I can have... I have pom-pom, tape, and straw. So we can take the pom-pom to the straw. And then we have cotton ball and then we tape it to the wire. We can't, we can just stick it to the wire. Oh yeah, stab it. So, um, Owen, so which one should we do first? I think that we should really do a marble, I mean, the, never mind, pom-pom and straw. Wait, 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 cotton ball and wire. This is the pet cleaner, and we're going to take the, the pet cleaner on the pom pom. So the pom pom's going to be on the pet cleaner tape. And we, we can, um, we can Charlie, stuff this you're still stuck in here? inside there. So Your pom pom? We'll be able to cut Got the pom pom from this. Yeah. Where is it? I always, um, make sure that they understand the engineering design process and start from the beginning. Using the pictures really really helps in talking about the questions that, that are underneath the pictures um, and bringing out the model of the engineering design process so that they really can understand it and use it and think about it in their own life as you know just a good problem solver. Um, so I always start out with that and then thinking about um, making some good decisions about um, making the technology that they're going to use for their problem. This unit has different um, materials from which they have to solve. Um, and thinking about the students, which ones will be more successful with what, which will be a good challenge for some students. Um, so it sort of lends itself a differentiation. 
um, which is really good in a classroom, especially in an inclusion classroom. I think it's really um, advantageous for the children to think on their own, to have some ideas, um, and to label things and not just to think off and, and because the table of materials is so enticing, they want everything. Um, and then for them to think about having to talk to another person about it, coming up with a plan is a little more challenging. So to come up with something by themselves first gives them that individual ideas and then to be able to share them and come up with something constructive together is a little more difficult, but it's more, um, it's helpful when they go to make the, create their piece, if, especially if they have the same materials they've chosen, maybe the same design or a little bit different, but have that conversation about it. <laughs>